what we're going to do now is we're going to, we've talked about light as a wave. We've talked about its frequency, its wavelength, its speed, its amplitude. We've talked about the wave properties of light. Now we're going to move and think about the particle properties of light. What happens when we think of light as a particle as opposed to as a wave? What happens? So here's my question. We have a laser. Can I keep making this laser dot dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer forever? Keep having it, for example. Make it half as bright, half as bright, half as bright. Can I do that forever? And this may seem like a very, you know, abstract philosophical question. I'm going to flip it on its head for you. Can I take a sample of water and keep reducing its amount forever? No. Eventually I get down to one water molecule and I'm done. This was the basis for the atomic theory. You can't separate matter forever. I'm just asking you the exact same question for a dot of light. Can I keep having it forever? And it turns out the answer is no. I can't. At some point, I reach the bottom. There's a smallest dimness. Just like there's a smallest amount of water you can have, there's a smallest amount of light you can have. And we call this smallest amount of light, we say it's a particle of light, and we call it a photon. Now, the first day, I introduced a bunch of symbols for E for electron, P for proton. For photon, we are going to use this symbol. No, it is not a Y. It is the letter gamma, the Greek letter gamma. If you want to write it by hand, it looks like that. It's a lowercase gamma. That's what I'm going to use for photon because I'm going to get tired of writing the word photon all the time. So what we can imagine this laser beam as being as a bunch of flow, we can think of it as a light wave where I change the amplitude to make it brighter or darker. Or we can flip that on its head and say it's a bunch of photons flying along together and to make it brighter or darker I change the number of photons. So already we're sort of bouncing back and forth between thinking of things as waves and particles. Turns out this photon image is really good when we think about light being absorbed from, by materials or emitted from materials. That's when thinking in terms of particles tends to be a good picture. Waves, on the other hand, tend to do really well when we're thinking about light flying through space. That's where waves tend to do well. Okay? So we listed the properties of an electron. We listed the properties of a proton. Let's go through the properties of the photon real quick. So we are now imagining light to be made up of little balls. But we are imagining them to be made up of little massless spheres. Little massless particles that travel at the speed of light C. But even though they are massless, they still carry energy and momentum. I think we can all agree that this laser beam is carrying energy to it, you know, because if I hold this button long enough, the battery dies. So clearly there's energy being transferred. We'll talk about momentum in a second. 